get a chance to <coughs> hope that you get a chance to rest a bit. Uh, we will go on with the program. So uh, first of all, I would like to greet all presenters of the conference and dear online participants from all over the world. Welcome all back. I have the honor to be a moderator of the first session with very interesting themes regarding libraries and United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, if you will have a question for our presenters, please use the chat or question and answer uh, set even during the presentation, and I will give my best to provide answers from presenters. So uh, off we go. First uh, presenter, uh, presenters uh, will be from uh, Chinese University of Hong Kong, uh, Leo Ma and Lily Ko, uh, with the team supporting sustainable development goals, the role of Chinese University of Hong Kong Library. Leo Ma is the head of upper campus libraries at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. He's a standing committee member of IFLA Academic and Research Library Section, fellow of the Hong Kong Library Association, advisory member of uh, LIAS programs at the University of Hong Kong. Uh, Lily Ko is currently a learning, uh, learning service manager at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Uh, she was the secretary of Hong Kong Library Association in 2018. Dear colleagues, the floor is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is a great honor today to have this wonderful opportunity uh, to share our experience in supporting the Sustainable Development Goals by the Chinese University of Hong Kong. In short, uh, I will use the CHK uh, library. Uh, I am Leo and my partner is Lily. Now, this is the agenda for today, and uh, I will touch base on the United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and I will also mention about SDGs in Hong Kong and in CHK. And uh, we also will touch on the CHK library and the Library Environment Sustainability Progress Index, in short, a LESPI. And finally, we will go in much more details in the SDGs in CHK library. Now, this is the uh, UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Developments. Uh, which was adopted by all UN member states in 2015, uh, which is a global plan to fight poverty, to establish equality and justice, and to achieve sustainable development for all countries. It consists of 17 sustainable development uh, goals and 169 targets covering a wide spectrum of social and economic development issues. Now, this is the policy document uh, developed by UN uh, for the uh, Sustainable Development uh, 2030 Agenda. And I trust uh, every one of us is familiar with this document, so I'm not going to go into much details here. Now, in Hong Kong, uh, the Hong Kong chapter of the United Nations Sustainable Development Solutions Network is co-hosted by the Hong Kong Jockey Club Charities Trust and the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Uh, in CHK, uh, and actually we are a socially uh, responsible institution of higher education committed to sustainable development. The university set up the social responsibility and sustainable development office to advise senior management on key areas of uh, university social responsibility and to execute, evaluate and enhance the university social responsibility action initiatives outlined in the university strategic plan. Now, actually, uh, we also embed SDGs in our learning curriculum, such as the uh, University General Education Program. Uh, for CHK Library, we have uh, in our strategic plan, 2021-2025, we have five key themes in our strategic plans, and, and out of which uh, the last one, infrastructure, uh, is closely related to uh, SDG and sustainable development issues. We embrace social responsibility and sustainable development. Now, in, uh, in 2019 IFLA Congress, uh, Senenenev and uh, uh, ECTA devised the uh, LESPID to map the library indicators against the SDGs. 
which is a very useful tool. So in our presentation, we review the LSP with a local modification and to list out the indicators of CHK library showing the progress towards the SDGs. Uh, CHK library supports uh, various SDGs in many ways. Because of time, this presentation will focus on SDG 3, 4, 9, and 16. Now in the next slide, I will hand it over to uh, my partner, Lily, please. To support SDG 3, good health and well-being, the libraries have organized Dr. Doc's visits at CHK Library during exam periods. And also, we have the lip guides on positive psychologies and resources on this area. We have also collaborated with the Office of Student Affairs to organize a number of, of activities to, to um, related to students' well-being. To support SDG 4, quality education, the main library indicators are reading promotion and digital and information literacy. For reading promotion, we have good reads corners at the university library and branches. To, have, um, to support the digital and information literacy, the various university library in Hong Kong we have a deep collaborate project. We have created a mood course that is info lit for you. That is a self-paced non-credit bearing mood. The CHK library has also organized a number of online library workshops in these two years, such as uh, academic honesty, open access, researcher workshops, e-resources, etc. to support and to, um, to support the digital and information literacy to our students. And then for SDG number nine, industry, innovations and infrastructures, we, the two main indicators are the creative space and collaborations with various departments to support innovations and creative learnings. We have the digital scholarship labs and the learning garden and maker space. With this innovative space, we partnered with various departments to organize um, the events such as a CHK data hack. This is a hybrid event and then the students can come to the libraries up to, for two days to do the data hack. Then to support SDG 16, please justice and strong institutions. We have the integrated library system. This is the interface of um, the library search and we have the CHK digital repository, which we have digitized a number of unique collections within, uh, within the CHK libraries and also in CUHK. We support the code on access to information in Hong Kong. In 2017, we have uh, received an award for from IFA Green Library Award. To move forward, we have um, some the in infrastructures under the CUHK library strategic plan. That is, um, we will play our part in helping the university achieve its goals of carbon neutrality by 2038. We have, there's a lot of things to do in the future. And if you have any questions or would like to talk to us, I would like to know more about that. Please feel free to contact Leo and I in the future. And now um, we just want to say thank you very much for your thank attention. You. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this was a great uh, example of uh, uh, from a Chi Chinese and uh, uh, Chinese University of Hong Kong. Uh, thank you, dear colleagues from Hong Kong. If you have any questions, you can contact them by email because unfortunately due time uh, zones, they are not able to participate in uh, live on this con uh, conference. So let's go to the next presentation. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Gary uh, Schaefer from University of Southern California, Los Angeles, United States of America. 
with the team libraries helping the UN achieve its uh, 2030 sustainability goals, a way forward. Uh, Dr. Gary Schaeffer uh, serves as uh, adjunct, uh, um, adjunct faculty for University of uh, Southern California, uh, Marshall School of Business Master of Management in Library and Information Science. As uh, director of Glendale Library Arts and Culture in Los Angeles metropolitan area. Uh, Dr. Uh, Schaefer, uh, the floor is yours. Hello, my name is Dr. Gary Schaefer, and I'm joining you virtually today from the University of Southern California in Los Angeles, where I am a part time professor of library management at the Marshall School of Business. Uh, for a program I once directed. I also serve today as the library director for a local library system and as president elect for the California Library Association. My area of scholarship is actually institutional sustainability. Today, I will be speaking with you on how US public and academic libraries are addressing the UN's 2030 agenda. I'll be sharing research I've conducted on triple bottom line sustainability, mapping those results to five of the 17 goals in the interest of time, and sharing US library sustainability practices. Last, I'll point you to where you can find more information on the topic. US libraries have done a lot towards sustainability. Starting in 2014 with the American Library Association forming the Sustainability Roundtable to seven years later, passing a carbon neutrality referendum for conferences by 2025. This said, anecdotally, US library staff are fairly unaware of the goals and they tend to view sustainability through an environmental or climate change lens only, and not through the UN's more triple bottom line approach, which includes social and financial measures. In 2018, I published a dual study uh, whose population included sustainability practitioners at Fortune 50 most admired companies. All of the companies participated in the global reporting, reporting initiative and leading US library directors as determined by Library Journal. You may read about it in this book and glean many of the practices we'll be talking about uh, from it. In 2019, Dr. Ray Pun and I edited a, a collection of sustainability practices and teaching from academic libraries. I'll be drawing on both these works in the next few slides. Again, in the interest of time, we only have uh, time to cover five of the 17 goals, but you can read much more about those, uh, these other practices in the previously cited works. Some US public libraries are doing much to address goal two, zero hunger, including serving as meal sites for children's lunch programs in summer to providing snacks year round and stocking food pantries while their academic counterparts are literally running food pantries for hungry students and operating garden produce or grown uh, exchanges. Both types of libraries often operate seed lending libraries, where you actually, at the end of the growing season, return seeds from your best produce. When it comes to goal three and health, various US public libraries are doing programs on positive aging and nutrition, one even checks out outdoor play equipment. Some of their academic counterparts have instituted bicycle lending programs and offer healthy food options at programs and functions. In terms of goal five, gender equality, fortunately, many US libraries have a greater ratio of women working in them as compared to men. Many of these women have been encouraged by other women to take on leadership roles. Public libraries have offered women or girls only programming around science, technology, engineering, art and math, or finance classes. Also, fortunately, US academic libraries have done a great bit of teaching around all 17 goals. Thus, students are getting exposed to goal five, among others. When it comes to goal eight, decent work and economic growth, where companies in the study viewed contract overseas labor 
literally as if they were their own employees, obviously not on their payroll, but literally as if they, you know, were most interested in their experiences and a safe working environment as they would with their own employees. U.S. public libraries, not so much, but they did report monitoring their supply chain to ensure purchased items were ethically sourced. They provide benefited jobs to unskilled labor, good jobs, and are transparent when it comes to wages. The majority of the libraries allow their employees to organize into unions, and they offer safe and comfortable working conditions. In terms of goal 13, climate action, this is where US libraries excel. This due to their often singular focus as previously discussed on environmental sustainability. Many public libraries have incorporated climate-friendly vehicles into their fleets and have built leadership in energy and environmental design or lead designated libraries. While many academic libraries are teaching and incorporating many environmentally sustainable programs. Again, for more information, please check out either of these two books. In closing, to recap, U.S. libraries are acting in a sustainable fashion. Because of their focus on the environment, they don't necessarily often view many of their positive practices as relating to sustainability, though the rest of the world does. Their practices are a bit all over the place and don't tend to be prescriptive or system systematic. Finally, ALA is trying to address this, but there still is much work to do. Thank you for your time today. I look forward to hearing from all of you. Have a great day. I would like to thank, uh, thanks Dr. Schaefer for the great presentation and uh, all of you who have a question mm -hmm. for Dr. Schaefer, please, uh, you will have a contact in a chat box. Uh, copy the email and uh, send the email to uh, Dr. Schaefer. I think that he will be very pleased to answer, answer on it. Uh, next presenter, uh, she comes from uh, France. She's uh, Sophie Bobet uh, from Bibliothèque de la Ville de Paris from France. Uh, her team is La Médiothèque de la Canopée, a green library in progress. Uh, Sophie uh, Bobet is a curator, library director of uh, La Canopie La Fontaine since 2017, and also a trainer for many institutions like Mediadix, CNP, uh, FPT, etc. Uh, Sophie, the floor is yours. Hello, I am with my colleague uh, Alice Larmagnac. Hello. <laughs> who leads uh, the, um, the group, uh, uh, the, library, the Green Library uh, in our, our library. And we, are, we can uh, answer to your question by email uh, after the presentation, if you need it. Our library. La Médiathèque de la Canopée, a green library in progress. Our library, to sum up. Inside the Westfield, Le Hall Mall, different publics, local residents, shoppers at the shopping mall, actives from Grand Paris and the round, and deaf people as a Paul Sour. 1,060 square meters, 45,500 documents, 21 librarians, 262,554 books lent out in 2019, 211,193 entrances. The Green Library, a planning project for 2019-2021. In 2019, the Canopée La Fontaine Library in Paris 
was chosen to pilot a circular economy project with a view to reducing the environmental impact of the library, starting with a change to the library's internal professional practices, as well as building a coherent offer of services to the public. A Parisian plan decided by the Direction of Cultural Affairs of Paris. Led by the Directorate of Cultural Affairs, the Canopé La Fontaine Library took part in an initial work group that brought together various actors in the cultural sector, including the Maison de Métalos, the Gaieté Lyrique, and the Cartoucherie de Vincennes to think about the issue of circular economy. The work group published a booklet on a culture and circular economy, which comprised of nine worksheets on the following themes, labels and norms, management, programming, raising awareness among members of the public, tendering and accusations, restoration, waste management, buildings, reuse, and finally, research and looking ahead. A committed program, collections and services. Already in 2018, the library had developed a collection of documents specializing in ecology, alongside different services, such as a seed library, the Grenothèque, to enable the exchange of seeds amongst our patrons, a bouturothèque for the barter of cuttings. The network of city libraries in Paris, to which the library belongs, is already involved in reflecting globally on these issues, especially regarding raising awareness amongst our library users. Cultural program. Workshops around the recycling, as well as lectures, debates and urban walks are on offer to enable the library users to understand the challenges of sustainable development as part of the framework of the 2030 Agenda. A team project. Thus, in 2019, Following an initial meeting on the topic of ecology at work, let's talk about it, we decided to make ecology a central part of our strategic plan. A cross-party working group on the theme of the Green Library was led by Alice Larmagnac, who is in charge of the adult non-fiction collections at the library. The objectives set for the group were to work on collection development and to imagine new services for and with our users. And we were also tasked with reflecting on our own professional practice. In 2018, we decided to think about a team project and it became a main line of our team project. We have started to think about setting up an environmental management system based upon the ISO 2015 standard in order to reduce and control our environmental impact. Implementing an EMS means demonstrating compliance with current and future legal and regulatory requirements, as well as strengthening the involvement of management and employees by setting strategic environmental objectives explains our inter Auror Tessa. The EMS is both an internal management tool for the library that also enables us to constantly strengthen our engagement to improve our environmental performance by integrating the city library network, service providers and partners. An action plan. This determined our action plan to improve indicators such as the management of daily waste, 
the plastic covering of books that can be borrowed from the library, 18-month-long pilot tests, the networked management of weeded documents linked via the Directorate of Cultural Affairs, the Central Service for Documents and Exchanges, and the Central Book Reserve. Our hope to change our professional practices in parallel with this internal approach, we have produced a green library guide to inform colleagues and librarians working in different sectors about this topic and to encourage them to discuss these issues. This guide lists the different areas in which we have implemented eco-friendly procedures for office life, communication, the digital world, cultural programming, services to the public, and other ideas we imagined for tomorrow. Through our reflection, we hope to gradually change our professional practices, but also those of other actors in the book chain. Since the guide was published on our blog, La Fabrique à Idée, we have taken part in many study days organized by Normandie Livre et Lecture, the Bibliopole of Maine et Loire and the NCIB, French National School for Library Studies, which enabled us to meet different actors of the book chain, such as l'Académie du Climat and the SHIFT project, continuously developing and growing professionally through our discussions. Alice Larmagnac and Ophélie Hamon, in charge of the children's and family collections, recently attended training on the Fresque du Climat and are now hoping to welcome a performance at the library to raise awareness of climate-related issues amongst our library users. We were able to experiment such new formats to reach out to our users in line with our core missions. Many partnerships have helped us along the way, be it with Mairie, Paris Nature and the Green Spaces Directorate, with nearby shared gardens and others, Ministry of Culture, Paris Nature, SICTOM, etc. And for the 2030 Agenda, a public survey. At the same time as reflecting on our EMS, we thought about our offer of services to the public and conducted a public survey with an intern, Florence Coll. The Canopé already offers numerous initiatives related to urban biodiversity, but sustainable development, as understood in the 17 objectives voted by the United Nations in 2015, covers much more diverse fields. With 329 answers, the three objectives of sustainable development that were favored by the public were in order of preference. First, quality education for all and throughout life. Second, good health and well-being at all ages. And third, gender equality. We have begun workshops to understand the representations of users with regard to the library and sustainable development. Fighting against climate change was in fourth position. These results, compared to other similar studies, have a lot to teach us. For my world, since 2015, health came first, followed by work and then education. According to Global Survey 2017 to 2019, ecology came ahead of health and education. The specificity of our results can be explained by the young age range of our library users. Median age 28, average age 38 years old. This led us to widen our reflection. We have begun workshops to understand the representations of users with regard to the library and sustainable development. Our experiment is still ongoing and will probably lead to new issues being uncovered. Our professional sector is undeniably a core stakeholder of the book chain 
and this leads us to question our professional practices as well as our impact on the environment. By modifying our practices involving our users and other stakeholders, we are definitely participating in the necessary change. Uh, dear colleagues uh, from France, uh, thank you for this great uh, presentation. I'm sure that we will uh, have some questions, uh, but we will answer them after uh, at the end of the session. So please, uh, to all your participants, uh, this is opportunity to ask questions, to uh, communicate, with, communicate with presenters. Please use that opportunity and uh, use a chat for communication between presentations presenters and participants. Uh, we will go on with the next presentation uh, from uh, Natalie Scardozo from German Institute for Global and Area Studies in Germany. Uh, she will present a theme called uh, German Libraries and Agenda 2030, how libraries are contributing to the sustainable development goals. Uh, Natalie Cardozo is a Brazilian, Brazilian librarian and a researcher with 20 uh, years of work experience. She was a Jim, uh, German Chancellor Fellow of uh, Humboldt Foundation and a researcher at the Hamburg University of Applied Science. Uh, so, uh, Natalie, here is uh, the floor is yours. Uh, we can hear your presentation. Hi everyone, my name is Natalis Cardoso and I am a librarian. First, I would like to thank the Croatian Library Association for the invitation and say that I am glad to be here today talking about such an important topic for us. So thank you for coming and I hope you enjoy my talk. Today, the topic of my presentation is German Libraries and the Agenda 2030. I will show some of the results of my research. There is a widespread unawareness about sustainable development and whether and how libraries can contribute to a more sustainable society. Wherever the subject has gained prominence in recent years and discussion on the role and social responsibilities of library science concerning this issue are increasing. I chose Germany to do my research because Germany is one of the most sustainable countries in the world and its libraries have become an international example of sustainability. This research aims to answer the following questions. Do librarians in Germany know what the sustainable development goals are? Do German libraries have any partnership with other institutions to carry out projects and programs. Which sustainable development goals are libraries in Germany addressing? In this research, I used the quantitative research method and the online survey was created using SOS CI survey, which was sent through different libraries on channels. The survey was open from 7 to March to 7 July 2020, and it addressed all libraries in Germany, regardless of their type or size. The survey had nearly 700 respondents from different types of libraries, the majority of which were public libraries, around 69%. Only one person per library could answer the questionnaire. Due to repetitive and incomplete answers, only 432 answers were taken into account. Considering the total amount of 90,297 libraries in Germany, this gives the research a 5% margin of error and confidence intervals of 95%. I would like to begin by addressing the first question. Do librarians in Germany know what the sustainable development goals are? The result shows that 53% of the respondents, librarians working in German libraries, 
were aware of the Sustainable Development Goals, and 47% had no awareness of them at all. Moving on now to the second question, do the library have any partnership with other institutions to carry out projects and programs? Only 39% replied that they have partnership with other institutions, and 60% answered that they are no partnership. Now, I would like to move on to the last question. Which sustainable development goals are most pursued? The result was interesting because if you look at this chart, you can see that goal number four, quality education, which is usually the most associated to the libraries, occupies the second position. And the goal number eight, decent work and economic growth, received the most attention and work in German libraries. We can also see that many libraries don't perform any action related to the goal number nine. Although 47% of librarians do not know what the sustainable development goals are, they develop actions and projects that contribute to the SDGs. Even so, the service offered by libraries is still need to improve. As an example, here in this chart of actions that can be developed from goal number eight, it's possible to see that many libraries don't perform any actions related to the goal number eight. In order to solve this problem, it would also be important for the 60% of libraries that have no partnership to carry out their actions and projects, and it starts considering partnership because by doing so, it's possible to increase or even improve the service provided by libraries. To conclude my presentation, considering the difficulty that some librarians are facing, I developed a calculator to help other librarians measure how they are working to achieve the SDGs. Any library can fill out the questionnaire so that they can get an idea of how they are contributing. This is just one example of a result. For those who do not know where to start, on my side there is also a checklist. To encourage more librarians to think about actions and implement them in libraries. Both the calculator and the checklist are available in 90 different languages. Thank you for listening. If anyone has questions, I will be happy to answer them by email. Uh, dear Natalis, thank you for this uh, great presentation and uh, very nice research. Uh, we can talk more uh, on the section uh, uh, questions and answers. But for now, if any of you have a questions, you will you have a contact uh, Gmail from Natalis and you can uh, ask her more. Uh, now we will go to our next presenters, uh, Teresa Costa and Luisa Alvin from Universita de Lisboa, Portugal. Uh, they will talk more about libraries and UN Agenda 2030, uh, scientific production index in the web of science and scopes. Uh, colleagues, uh, Teresa, uh, Teresa Costa, uh, she's the head of librarian at the Faculty of Medical Science, Universita Nova de Lisboa. Uh, invited assistant professor at the Master uh, in Documentation and Information Science at the Faculty of Arts of the University of Lisbon. Uh, Lisbon. Luisa Alvin, uh, she's a PhD in Information Science uh, at University of Evora. She's a member of Research Center uh, from the same university and from University de Coimbra. Uh, dear colleagues from Portugal, the floor is yours. You can share your presentation. Hello everyone, my name is Teresa Costa and I'm presenting a work that I've made with my colleague Luis Alvin regarding libraries and the 2030 Agenda, Achieving the Goals for Sustainable Development. The 2030 Agenda, proposed by the United Nations in 2015, 
was presented to countries around the world as a sustainability plan to be implemented through development goals. It is an universal plan that aims to improve the world in environmental, economic and social aspects so that the lives of citizens in different countries are transformed and developed. 17 sustainable development goals and 169 corresponding targets have been created for national and local governments, public and private institutions and individuals to implement and have them enforce through innovative and sustainable decision making. The 2030 Agenda is a commitment to the ideal of improving the human conditions in all aspects, with the main aim being peace, justice and social equality for all. This wish is expressed in Goal 16, which aims to promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development. Target 6.10 states that ensuring public access to information and in protecting fundamental freedom is the primary path to transforming the world. Libraries and documentation centers are essential partners in and for sustainable development and implementation of the 2030 Agenda through the availability of their services to provide access to information. The importance of VIFLA to the United Nations and information professionals is mentioned to highlight the essential role that libraries and information centers play in the access to information and the networked services that support development. Through the International Advocacy Program, IFLA undertakes awareness raising on the uh, sustainable development goals among information professionals worldwide promoting the role that libraries can play in development at local and national levels, not only in access to information, but also in the development of the goals, particularly in the information literacy, in helping local governments understanding the information needs to communities, promoting network services, digital inclusion, and information and communication technologies. According to IFLA, Public libraries are at the forefront of implementing the goals with accessible information services responding to the interests and needs of different groups and institutions that can make up the communities in which they are located. Their action favors dialogue between citizens and local authorities, a key relationship that makes it possible to carry out social projects in the line with the goals of the 2030 Agenda. These institutions can make a clear contribution to the 2030 Agenda goals, not as, as isolated entities, but as agglutinating and social involvement centers for and with communities in direct contact with public administrations and local development projects. Academic libraries can also contribute to the sustainable development by offering products and services to their communities Making information available and training users to access information is a way of exercising its social function and enabling individuals to exercise their civil, political and cultural rights. In this study, we sought to know the scientific output, particularly scientific articles published in this topic within the scope of library science, especially because the value of libraries, archives, documentation centers and others in the implementation of the guidelines of the 2030 Agenda and the 17 goals is recognized and assumed. More than ideological, the 2030 Agenda is a commitment to a common ideal for the improvement of the human conditions in all aspects, aiming above all at social justice and equality. And libraries and documentation centers assume themselves as fundamental partners in and for sustainable development and implementation of the 2030 Agenda. In many places around the world and in many local communities, information and documentation centers are the only space where citizens can access information to help them improve their education, develop new skills, find jobs, build businesses, make informed decisions about agriculture and health, or get information on Env environmental issues and to improve their lives. Access to information is not an end in itself, but it is a driver of progress to empower communities and sustain equality for all individuals 
as advocated in the holistic approach of the 2030 Agenda. To implement the Sustainable Development Goals, library and information centers support access to information, develop literacy actions, help local governments to realize the information needs of communities, promote networking services, digital inclusion, and information and co communication technology. Regarding our methodology, we have performed a search in Scopus and Web of Science databases between 2015 and 2020. We limited to the library science subject area. We only uh, are analyzing uh, articles. We retrieve 49 articles, and then we have made a document analysis of each article regarding the year, author, publication, title, uh, sustainable development goal, type of institution, subject, country and continent, and plus a bibliometric analysis. Regarding the number of articles per year, we can see that the, the number of articles is growing and we achieve 17 articles in 2020 regarding the agenda uh, 2030 and libraries and information science. Regarding the number of articles per uh, goal, we can notice that most articles address the 70 goals uh, as a whole, highlighting the importance role of libraries as key players in the access to information, universal literacy, public access to information and communication technologies, and cultural heritage in the framework of the 2030 Agenda. We can also highlight the uh, goal number four regarding uh, uh, an inclusive education and also the 16 goal uh, that uh, uh, it's about promote peaceful and inclusive societies. Um, the majority of articles mention IFLA. IFLA's role has been fundamental, representing the interests of information services and their users, working to promote libraries as the driving force for an informed and literate society. This is reflected in research that also ends up focusing on the work and practices of information professionals who are engaged in the implementation of the goals in their libraries. Uh, we can also see the, the number of articles uh, by type of institution. And here we can highlight the public libraries reinforcing that their action promotes dialogue between citizens and local authorities, a key relationship that enables the implementation of social projects in line with the goals of the 2030 Agenda. Um, regarding the subject, we can see that we can highlight um, information communication technology and also literacy that stands out. But we can also see that professional training and green libraries are gaining importance in the subject of these articles, as a subject in these articles. Um, the 2030 Agenda aims for global universal coverage with application throughout the world. Thus, it's not surprising that articles with a global vision in geographical terms have been retrieved, aiming at the Sustainable Development Goals implementation on various continents, countries, or cities. For final remarks, we can say that in 2015, world leaders adopt this ambitious agenda with 70 sustainable development goals. This global plan aims to transform the world by 2030 to ultimately create dignified lives for all. It is an universal, integrated, and transformative vision for a better world. This research has made possible, among other aspects, to undertake an analysis of the number of articles published per year on this topic and which has shown a growing evolution in the interest of researchers concerning libraries and the 2030 agenda and its goals in recent years. Analysis of the evolution of the 2030 agenda and its academic, professional and social importance among information services researchers based on the experiences and reports from several libraries in several countries around the world, allow us to highlight the beginning of a basis 
for the construction of a research field regarding sustainable development goals regarding sustainable development and the 2030 agenda. Here we can, you, you can find some of the bibli bibliography that we used to do this study. And I also let you our emails. Uh, if you want to contact us, feel, please feel free to do it. Thank you so much. Uh, I'd like to thank your colleagues from Portugal. This was a very interesting uh, uh, research. Uh, we can uh, comment it after all presentations. So uh, next presentation, uh, colleagues come from uh, Croatia, uh, Dolores uh, Mumelas and Ivana Kežić Pusketic from National and University Library in Zagreb with the team uh, National and University Library in Zagreb collection and the European role in green librarianship promotion. Uh, Dolores obtained a bachelor degree in Croatian language and literature at University of Jure Dobrila in Pula and master's degree in librarianship and museology and heritage management at the Faculty of Humanities and Social Science. Uh, colleague uh, Kežić Putketić Ivana, she obtained a master's degree in Croatian language and literature and Southern Slavic studies, as well as in librarianship at the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences at the University of Zagreb. She uh, has been employer of the National and University Library since 2012. So dear colleagues from National Library, the floor is yours. You can share your presentation. Thank you. I'm Dolores Mumelas, and my colleague Ivana Kežić Pusketić and I made a presentation called National and University Library in Zagreb Official Publications Collection and the European Documentation Center role in green librarianship promotion, which we will now present. As you already know, official information publications represent a valuable source of information in encouraging not just library users, but also wider communities' interests for themes such as sustainable development and environmental protection, and they are also the basis of environmental literacy. In national and university library, such sources of information are gathered in official publications collection and European Documentation Center. UN Agenda 2030 gave them clearer guidelines for conduction of activities such as work with all official information forms, participation in conferences, and so on, all of that to promote healthy lifestyle and green librarianship. In short, Official Publications Collection collects official information publications and documents of the Republic of Croatia, the European Union, the United Nations, and other international organizations. It includes content like law and politics, economic and financial development, international trade, population, and so on. It collects legal norms, statistical publications, country studies, and similar materials. The type of publications that collection gathers are monographs, serial publications, small print, microfiches, and online resources. As mentioned, the collection gathers the publication of the UN, which counts about 4,500 monographs, 200 serial publications, and 16,000 small prints. Type of procurement is gift. Most of the publications are in English language. The most active bodies are the United Nations Economic Commission for Europe, World Trade Organization, and United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. We also use UN official website to help our users in search for the informations that they need. In 2012, the Energy Efficiency Green Library was opened as part of the official publications collection in collaboration with the United Nations Development Program. The purpose of its opening is to make professional publications specializing in this field more available to both the general public and the professionals, and in this way stimulate the increase in energy efficiency through the implementation of various energy efficiency measures and focusing the attention of the public on renewable energy resources. In 2018, 
the European Documentation Center was opened, also as part of the official publications collection. The center is a point of reference for all information related to European Union. It provides access to publications and documents published by the EU Publications Office. The center collaborates with European Commission communication and information activities under the common name Europe Direct. We will now mention some of the activities that we have done to promote the UN 2030 Agenda. At the first international conference on green libraries, Let's Go Green, we held the poster presentation named Official Publications, an Essential Factor of Green Librarianship. With the poster, we presented official publications as an important source of information about sustainable development. Among other things, we have mentioned UN Millennium Declaration and UN Agenda 2030. Here is a quick overview of the poster. As part of the European Day celebration in 2020, we made the online exhibition of online publications named European Green Deal. As you already know, European Green Deal is the European Commission strategy for protection of human well-being and health from environmental risks. Key subjects are climate, circular economy, clean energy, industry mobilization, and so on. The exhibition was designed to interest and involve the public in the strategy, and it presents strategic publications and documents. It is permanently available on the official website of the European Documentation Center. On the occasion of Croatian Book Month 2020, in collaboration with Croatian Web Archive, we created a digital thematic collection, Environmental Protection. It presents thematic collection of archived copies of websites on the topic of environmental protection. The thematic collection contains public authorities and other official bodies and associations' websites and Croatian news portals, which are dealing with topics such as climate changes, sustainable development, waste management, recycling, and so on. The goal is to inform the public about the strategies and opportunities needed to raise awareness and identify global environmental challenges. We presented this thematic collection in this year's Festival of Croatian Digitization Projects with the poster, and here is a quick overview of that poster. Before I present you the next activity, I would like to introduce you to European Week of Sport. European Week of Sport is the initiative of the European Commission to improve awareness of the importance an active lifestyle has for everyone. It is organized every year from September 23rd to 30th and promotes more active, healthier lifestyles to millions of people in Europe and beyond. For the last three years, the European Documentation Center has been participating in organizing activities on the, on the occasion of the Week of Sport. In 2019, we organized the ADC Cycling in the cooperation with ADC of Library and Documentation Center of the Faculty of Economics, ADC of Institute for Development and International Relations, European Commission representation in Croatia, Central State Office for Sport, and Cyclists of Zagreb Library Association. Cycling participants were librarians, library users, and other interested citizens. The main goal was to promote the healthy lifestyle and the work of Zagreb ADCs. Last year, we organized the workplace exercise in cooperation with the Ministry of Tourism and Sport and the European Commission representation in Croatia. The 50 national and university library employees were exercising with the help of kinesiologists from a fitness academy. The main goal was to encourage our employees to be active and to raise awareness about the importance of daily physical activities. For the other part of the event, we made the online quiz named Sport and EU in cooperation with the public library Vlado Gotovac Sisak. The 10 of the best and the fastest quiz participants have received prizes. This year, we organized National and University Library Chess Simultaneous in cooperation with the Ministry of Tourism and Sport and the European Commission representation in Croatia. Uh, on that occasion, Croatian chess grandmaster Aloysia Janković simultaneously played chess against 15 other players. 
We also made an exhibition of chess books and chess tournaments posters in cooperation with National and University Library Graphics Collection. The goal was the popularization of chess as a sport and emphasis on cognitive forms of exercise. In conclusion, we can say that the official publications collection and the European Documentation Center are actively involved in promoting the UN Agenda 2030 goals. In addition to promoting the agenda itself, as well as UN publications, they also organize activities to promote green librarianship and promote libraries as places which can develop programs that can make a significant contribution to informing about the importance of sustainability. In this way, the collection and the center are including employees, library users and the general public in the sustainable development program. As a key to success, we would certainly mention the willingness of our domestic institution and external ins institutions to cooperate. I hope that our presentation was interesting to you and that it may serve you as an inspiration for the realization of similar programs and perhaps as an invit invitation for some future cooperation. Thank you for your attention. Uh, dear Dolores and Ivana, thank you for this great presentation. Uh, I know that uh, you will get more questions, but uh, you can contact them uh, also via email. And if you want to get uh, more information or ideas for cooperation, please again use uh, direct mails of our presenters. Uh, we will go now to uh, second uh, to next uh, presentation. Uh, presentation is by uh, Lucia Dodigovic and Anna Maria Kaucic. Lucia is from Institute for Anthropological Research for, from Croatia and Anna Maria Kaucic from National and University uh, Library in Zagreb. The theme of presentation will be impact of libraries on promotion, promotion, uh, promoting uh, sustainable development and raising environmental awareness. Uh, Lucia uh, Dodigovic is the head of the library and head of information and documentation service on the Institute of, uh, for Anthropological Research in Zagreb. And Anna Maria Kalcic is a librarian in Information Center of National and University Library in Zagreb. And for many years, she, she worked on many exhibition catalogs and uh, etc. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, the floor is yours. Let's start from history. History of green libraries, it kind of started 50 years ago, back in the early 1970s and United Nations Conference on the Human Environment in Stockholm. Well, since then, till 1990s, I can't say that we did much, maybe one or two books and maybe a couple of scientific papers, but people in general, didn't do much to improve the problems that were mentioned then. Since 1990s and Taylor's declaration, maybe it did start to change. It started to change globally. We all know that a lot of these, uh, not just Hollywood movies, but a lot of books started on like going green, a lot of green movements were made. And of course, libraries followed it. So, at 2013, we had our statement on libraries and development, where we kind of pushed the idea of going green as something that is a must, that we have to follow it. So, this is why a colleague of mine and I started to do a research on this very topic. How much did it change during the last 10 years, unlike all of the years before. We all know that Croatia, we all know that Croatia entered the European Union uh, that very year, 2013. And since then, we are trying to follow their guidance. But we are going green in many aspects even before entering the European Union. We actually started at 2011 
by a project, Green Library Project. It was started by Association of Librarians in Istria. Later on, our Croatian Library Association established a working group for green libraries with the idea of promoting the sustainable development of libraries. So, Croatia didn't actually just follow the European Union rules. We actually started to move upon them even before our connection with them. The International Federation of Library Association and Institution in its statement on libraries and development, emphasized that libraries have a natural role to play in providing access to information content and services that support sustainable development. This is something that we all follow since then. This is something that we should all follow since then. Well, maybe not all of us can, or maybe we can't do it as a professionals, but maybe we could all do it as individuals. So let's be librarians, if not like a educators to our public or users, maybe we could be educators for ourselves. This research kind of showed that we are doing it. Since then, our National University Library in Zagreb organized a green festival, Let's Go Green. It took place in 2017 as a part of Green Library for Green Croatia. This project was submitted to our IFLA Green Library Award of Competition and it was awarded as a runner-up. It proves the important contribution of Croatian libraries to the achievement of sustainability goals. It actually showed that we are on the right track and that we have to continue with these services, activities, events, literature, projects and that are related to any kind of sustainability that actually follows the United Nations Agenda of 2030. Okay, our national library, but libraries in general, are public buildings meant for the betterment of all. They have the responsibility not to contribute to the destruction of the environment. They have a responsibility to educate their users, their community regarding our current situation. And we are the ones that should empower them to make a difference on this planet. We are the ones who influence everybody that come to our path. We are the ones that are able to do and promote not just current subjects in our new books, but also our latest research. We can do it with our exhibitions, with our projects, with our movements inside our communities or maybe some special uh, days that we have with our public that comes to us every day. And this is the way to make a difference. This is the way that we are making a difference. The possibilities for librarians to boost the world's collective immune system are limitless. Maybe some of you know about the article from Charney and Hoke from Global Action in the Urgency of Climate Change. But now we can, because who has better all the scientific data and facts than librarians? Who is better equipped to give the right information than the librarians in, and the amount of books and articles and journals and everything that you can find in our local library. So this is the research that I was mentioning. In the last 10 years, we can here see a significant increase in the number of publication on the topic of Green Library in the last 10 years in Croatia. This is all collected from the data from our National University Library. 
we just went through the data in Croatian and English about green library, singular and plural. And you can all see that in the last 10 years, we have a significant increase in this topic among books or paperwork or even some reports. So we can see that in Croatia in the last 10 years, we are kind of a raising the awareness of the global issues in our communities, in our country. You know that one, think globally, act locally. I guess we kind of managed it because with our projects or exhibitions or whatever we did with our community, we can see that it worked. We are changing the things that are important and we can see that somebody is obviously listening and hearing what we are saying. So, not just here in Croatia, we went to our databases in, from Web of Science and Scopus and it also showed a significant increase in the number of publications on the topic of Green Library in the last 10 years in general. So, the whole world is actually thinking locally, acting locally. The whole world is listening. There has been an increased interest in green topics in the whole world. And the same trend is being followed by libraries around the world and librarians. Because when you, we look at the numbers, Yvonne can see that through the last 10 years, every year has been published from three to 500 paper researches or scientific papers on this very subject. And it is all visible in the world databases. So I guess librarians are actually quite good at being educators. It's working. So we did show that our little green library is an ideal starting point for educating their users on green issues and we are perfect for raising awareness of green topics. And this is why we should carry on. Earthquakes in Turkey and Greece, floods in India and Canada and UK, a drought in Somalia is worsening. These are only a couple of news reports in the last 10 minutes at the time of writing this very presentation. It was never more important and urgent than now to take the words of Greta Thunberg that she said in Davos in 2019. I want you to act as you would in a crisis. I want you to act as if our house is on fire. Because it is. So with this gathering here, librarians should become aware of the fact that they are one of the leaders in raising global awareness of climate problems and possible solutions for a brighter future. One could say we are educators for ourselves and for our communities and for everybody that wants to listen. So people, let us just go green. Thank you very much for your time and for this opportunity to present this. And I hope that maybe next time we will hear each other again, maybe even see each other. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, maybe in a brighter future or in a better world. Goodbye. Dear colleagues, thank you for the great presentation. Uh, again, if you need uh, to ask uh, questions, uh, use the chat or uh, email address.
Uh, we will go to our uh, last presentation, uh, last, last but not least. Uh, it's a presentation from uh, Malgorzata Fedorovic Kruševska from Nikolaus Copernicus University in Torun from Poland. The uh, theme of her uh, presentation is Every Choice Matters, remarks on uh, the implementation of the Green Libraries concept. Uh, Mal Malgorzata uh, fedorovic Kruševska is a professor in the Institute of Information Research at the Nikolaus Copernicus University in Torun, Poland. Uh, Malgorzata, the floor is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Małgorzata Federowicz Kruszewska and I represent Nikolaus Copernicus University in Torun, Poland. I will focus in my short speech on some barriers um, to the implementation of uh, the Green Libraries concept. But first of all, I would like to thank you for the invitation to the conference and congratulate the Library of the Faculty and Humanities and Social Sciences in the University of Zagreb, especially Working Group for Green Library, and the Croatian Library Association on the activities and engagement in promoting the concept of green libraries and supporting libraries in their efforts to achieve sustainable development goals. Your activity is visible internationally, as I have already pointed out in my publications and conference talks. Libraries have a major role to play since 90s last century in promoting sustainable development, including environmental sustainability, which will be the focus of my presentation. I would like to draw attention to the barriers to the implementation of environmental sustainability by libraries. I enumerated five barriers and I would like to present them briefly. In scientific communication, terminology plays a special role and precise definitions are needed for the act of communication to be effective. That's why Mm, the first and very important uh, barrier from my point of view is ambiguous definition of a green library. In the last two years, I conducted a content analysis of publications on green libraries included in the Library Information Science and Technology Abstract Database in 1990-2019 and Web of Science in 1991-2020. It turned out that the term green library is defined in different ways and there are no commonly accepted definitions. Based on the analysis of publications on green libraries, I extracted eight thematic categories referring to the concept of a green library. There are strategies and plans, building and its administration, equipment and products, collection, programs, services and projects, employee qualification, cooperation with the external environment and theory of green libraries. Given such diverse aspects emerging in relation to green libraries, which should nevertheless be included in the definition, I concluded that a green library is a library that aims at environmental sustainability. I assumed that environmental sustainability is equivalent to meeting the resource and services needs of current and future generation without comprising the health of the ecosystem that provide them. In my opinion, more effort should be made to explain what green libraries are and to promote the idea of green libraries. Another issue arising from the analysis of literature on green libraries that I would like to raise is the lack of guidelines for organizing green libraries. I am not the sole researcher to point to this problem. The issue was also noted by Hari Sahavirta when writing about Green Library environmental strategy. He wrote that environmental management is only possible when we know what is required of an environmentally aware 
library. This is not to say that no helpful documents have been produced to date. I enumerated some of them on the slide. I think, however, that it would be a great support for the libraries if following the example of other international guidelines developed and published by IFRA, you can see some of them on the slide, guidelines were prepared for libraries wishing to implement environmental sustainability. The lack of a universally accepted assessment criteria for the environmental performance of libraries is another barrier to the development of green libraries. General and specific goals of green libraries should correlate with the defined criteria for assessing the degree of achievement of environmental sustainability, the social impact, the impact on the individual and the institution. Again, this does not mean that no attempts have been made to develop them so far. I enumerated some publications uh, with uh, evaluation criteria for green libraries. However, the above mentioned green libraries assessment tools are scattered. Not all of them relate purely to environmental sustainability and uh, access to some is limited. Therefore, it is, in my opinion, necessary to develop and adopt general indicators for assessing green libraries, which would then be further developed and refined for the needs of specific types of libraries and the socio-economic conditions in which they operate. Another issue worth discussing in the context of service provision by green libraries is the need to draw librarians' attention to the assumptions and goals of environmental education. Environmental education goals were defined uh, in uh, 70s last century, and there are awareness of the environment as a whole and the issues related to it, knowledge about the environment and its problem, attitudes, it means concern for the environment and motivation to protect it, skills, such as identifying and solving environmental problems, and participation. It means active involvement in solving environmental problems. Environmental uh, education is supposed to lead to environmental literacy, which Charles E. Roth defined as the capacity to perceive and interpret the relative health of environmental system and take appropriate action to maintain, restore or improve the health of those systems. It is worth combining library activities with specific environmental education goals, which would make it possible to evaluate libraries' activities in this area. A final issue worth noting is the fact that progress on SDG implementation, including those related to environmental issues by libraries, is not monitored at the national level. At the international level, such data are collected and analyzed by IFLA, um, and the tool is the library map of the world, and within uh, it, SDG stories. And at the European level, they, such data are collected and analyzed by EBLIDA, and the tool is EBLIDA matrix. Let's turn to conclusions. In the sixth assessment cycle, Valerie Masson Delmotte, vice chair of APCC Working Group First, said that nowadays every half degree matters, every year matters, and every choice matters. I'm convinced that conferences such as today's one can help in removing barrier to the achievement of environmental sustainability in libraries. Despite several library activities aiming at environmental sustainability, I believe that pro-environmental actions are still not universally taken in libraries. Hence, the need to create mechanisms and tools that will encourage libraries to work towards environmental sustainability. 
Thank you very much for your attention. Again, uh, one great presentation. Uh, we, I think that we all can uh, agree that we heard a lot of interesting information from uh, different angles of our library field. And uh, for now, I would like to see if uh, our, all, all our presenters are here. And I will invite you to turn on the camera so they can, so we can see each other. So just turn on the camera and uh, for the attendees, if you have any questions, this is the time to ask them. Uh, do we have any questions? Uh, I will start from uh, with the question for our uh, first presenters from uh, Chinese University of Hong Kong, uh, China. Uh, with us is here uh, colleague Leo Ma. Uh, Leo, uh, I would like to ask you, uh, first of all, thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for joining us live uh, on this conference. I will have a question. Uh, or maybe just a comment. Uh, by your study, we can see importance and awareness uh, of uh, influence of university libraries on uh, sustainable development goals in student population. I also work in university library, and I think that uh, it's an important thing to say that university libraries can do a lot of uh, projects that that it can be helpful for the students and for the future the generation in that way we can somehow let's say influence we have have some influence or impact or are on our students so can you just comment that yes absolutely can you can you hear me yes, yes can you hear me yes uh, absolutely yeah i agree i can't kind of agree more with you that uh, you know, we need to educate we need to raise the awareness of the sustainability, um, you know, the United Nations agenda from uh, 2030, so that you know, our next generation of our students uh, would be aware of these you know, pertinent scenarios and you know, make further improvement uh, as to how we can support you know, a better world, uh, a, a better you know, life that we would expect in the future. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for being with us. And if you have any questions, please uh, just uh, ask. Okay. Uh, uh, and my next next question goes to uh, Bobe Sophie, if she is here with us. If if not, I cannot see. Yes. Um, yes, she's here. Yes. Okay. Yes. So glad to see you. Uh, so. Uh, my uh, question to you was, uh, how was the reaction of public, I mean, your users and patrons and uh, librarians who work in your library on this new green library agenda for the library service? Uh, how was the reaction? That means, uh, do they, did they react positively on this uh, green topics and new uh, way of working and, uh, let's say, being in library? Or there are some people who are against it? Uh, sorry, I, I think we didn't understand the question very well. It is about uh, the reaction of the public? Yes, of the public and the librarians who work in the library, in okay. your library. Um, I, I think the, the survey that we made uh, with our, our intern was, um, was uh, showed that the public uh, was uh, really uh, very interested in, interest in our, um, our initiative. And, and we, we, we are willing to continue this survey to, to have uh, more reactions because uh, with the COVID crisis, it was a little bit, um, uh, it wasn't uh, as, we, as we wanted it first, but um, for the, the first reactions that we had from the public, it was really encouraging, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Keep up with the good work. <laughs> 
Okay, uh, next question. Uh, do we have some questions from the audience? Still nothing? Yes, there is a question, one question. Uh -huh. uh, who is more responsive, uh, responsive to changes? Uh, so maybe we can ask that question, I don't know, someone from the presenters. Does any one of you would like to answer that question? Because I think it's a general question. Uh, Let's see. So, okay. Uh, that question means who, who is more responsive to the changes? It's like uh, a question for the uh, library users or for the general public or for the librarians. Uh, Olga, can you please maybe? Uh, uh -huh, for general public, who is more responsive? Because we have uh, here uh, lots of different libraries uh, and uh, different library audience, of course. I think that the public libraries uh, are general uh, gathering more uh, global uh, users. And for example, university libraries, we are only focused on students, of course, because th that is our patrons. Uh, but maybe we can ask that question uh, uh, some of the presenters, uh, like plus one question. So if Nat uh, colleague Natalis uh, Cardozo is here with us, uh, I will have a, some question for her, or maybe even comment if she's here. Natalis, are you here with us? No, no, she's not. She's no, she's not here. Uh, too bad. Uh, because uh, she was talking about um, this uh, research, and uh, again, uh, conclusion of this research was that libraries need education. Uh, so I need to think about this word education because it's constantly repeating on uh, all of our presentation. Maybe we can use that for conclusion. But uh, for one question also for Teresa Costa and Luisa uh, from Portugal is, for example, uh, you pointed out the importance of IFLA as uh, international support for libraries and uh, sustainable development goals. So uh, maybe we can talk more about collaboration, uh, how uh, important is collaboration within uh, libraries, between libraries and general public, uh, NGOs, uh, government, and, and et cetera. So is Teresa and Luisa, are they with us? No, we do not have them. But uh, again, I would like to point out the word collaboration because uh, that is also a very important uh, word for the conclusion of this session. Uh, next question, uh, I would like to also ask colleagues from National and University Library, Dolores and Ivana. I know that Dolores is here with us. Dolores, are you here? I'm here. Okay. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, we can hear you and see you. Uh, so one question is, uh, uh, these, you, are, you work at the National uh, Library, and uh, can you tell us more about your AIM uh, public? Uh, we, you have this uh, huge number of projects regarding green uh, themes. Uh, can you tell me more about uh, public uh, that you aim to? Uh, you mean uh, targeted audience? Yes, targeted audience. Uh, yes, um, our the targeted audience are librarians, library users, but also the entire community. Therefore, uh, all interested. Sometimes uh, we have a narrow, narrowly targeted audience, but usually the programs are for everyone. Uh, I would also like to say how important uh, is uh, that uh, the activities uh, that are carried uh, are carried out in cooperation with the local community, uh, public authorities, uh, and other interested institutions. Therefore, collaboration is the key, as you said, as you mentioned before. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for your answer. Uh, 
Uh, I think that we have, uh, uh -huh. do we have more chat? Okay, nothing uh, new. So uh, I would like to uh, invite uh, Lucia and Anna Maria Kalcic. Are you here with us? Uh, just to comment your uh, presentation. Yes, we are here. Oh, great. Actually, Thank I you. am. I'm not sure if Anna Maria can speak uh, because of the microphone and everything. <laughs> okay, but we can hear you very well. Okay. So uh, my... Uh, uh, question for after your presentation uh, was, are the libraries too humble? I think that sometimes uh, we are thinking that, oh, but in general, we are libraries are always doing some kind of projects and some kind of programs. That's our job, we love our job, et cetera. Are we too humble uh, to pack this uh, project that we are doing and to realize that we are really helping United Nations to accomplish uh, sustainable development goals? That's my question for you. Uh, my answer is that we are quite humble because a lot of our possibilities that we have uh, actually aren't so appreciated or maybe we don't uh, speak loud enough uh, for ourselves because a lot of people in general, especially uh, this, um, national libraries or these general libraries in like, uh, you know, like small libraries in some smaller places, they actually have this opportunity to communicate and to uh, educate. Like you mentioned the word is a lot uh, today, but um, I believe that uh, we are the ones that really influence the general public. We influence that uh, small man <laughs> that maybe isn't some scientist or maybe isn't somebody in the politics that maybe can't lift their voices for anything because they're just, you know, uh, normal people. And we do influence them. And I believe that normal people are the ones that can do a bigger difference. They should do it in everyday life in any situation. And if we manage to influence them, I think we did a great job. <laughs> so I know that our presentations was uh, a bit more uh, looking at this like scientific work, work uh, around the subject. But uh, the thing is, uh, there aren't so many scientists in the world. <laughs> so I think we should actually uh, be grateful on the opportunity to influence on the bigger part of the world. And actually that's the small public. That isn't just the scientific community. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I totally agree with you. And uh, so one last question is for a colleague from Poland. Uh, Malgorzata, uh, are you here with us? Okay, uh, can you turn on the camera? Uh, oh, sorry, uh, the microphone. Yes, yeah. I am. Okay. <laughs> uh, again, uh, your presentation was like a sugar at the end because I think that you managed somehow to conclude all the presentations because you talked about uh, barriers and how can they help us with achieving more and maybe to recognize uh, how can we uh, help and how can we define what we are doing by promoting that in general public and at our patrons and even between us. So uh, uh, thank you. I would like to thank you for some of the barriers and uh, to help uh, with newcomers in uh, Green Library field. I think your presentation will be very useful for them. And uh, I would like to give you the word if you want to conclude something because uh, regarding your presentation I will point out the key words of uh, the whole session. Okay, thank you very much. Um, you know, my mm, uh, view is that uh, libraries around the world uh, do a lot for environmental sustainability, but uh, not all of them. And from my point of view, if uh, we, I mean, we, so uh, international organizations, national organizations, uh, scientists, librarians, uh, when we recommend some uh, specific tools, uh, 
for assessing this uh, specific area of libraries activities. So I, I mean, some pro-environmental actions. Uh, it um, helped us to assess this, this, uh, this kind of um, uh, area of uh, li libraries activities, activities and uh, uh, it uh, enabled us to compare our activities with activities of other libraries. That's why uh, it's not that I, uh, I can see only disadvantages. <laughs> no, I see a lot of advantages uh, of um, uh, green libraries concept, but from my point of view, the most important is definition, what is green library? And when we know what is green library, then we can um, uh, offer some uh, indicators to assess this area of uh, green libraries. I'm, uh, I'm very pleased that uh, I uh, uh, saw in the Petra Hauke uh, presentation information that uh, IFLA is, uh, and SULIP especially, is um, working on some uh, international guidelines, let's say guidelines for uh, libraries, uh, which are um, uh, involved in, in this uh, area of uh, activities. So, I mean, for environmental activities, because from my point of view, it's, uh, it's very important for every librarian who wants to undertake these kind of activities in his or her uh, specific uh, library. Mm -hmm. So I hope that it will change uh, soon because I see how um, uh, active are uh, national um, uh, libraries association like yours and international uh, association like IFLA, especially and SULIP, of course. So I hope that it will change soon. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I agree with you. Uh, so, uh, I think that we came to uh, the end of our session. I would like to thank uh, all the uh, panelists with your great presentation. Thank you for your insight from uh, your point of view, from your libraries and from your work. I think that we will all gain something new from this session. And at the end, I would just like to uh, say uh, a few key words to conclude our session. So importance of uh, education, importance of cooperation, import of importance of uh, having support from, uh, internet, from international associations, from national associations and et cetera, regarding the different tools that we can use to promote uh, sustainable development goals. And again, importance of the advocacy uh, to communicate all these uh, projects and uh, activities that we are doing in our libraries. Thank you all. Uh, have a nice day and see you uh, in a few minutes after the break. Uh, colleagues from the Faculty of Philosophy, now they will tell us more about the break and the time. Uh, thank you, Maria. Uh, thank, thanks to all the panelists. Uh, now we'll have a five minute break before session two.